I uh, just posted up in Fort Campbell um, about 8.48 p.m. Look at this beauty. Guess what it is? See that? Mm -hmm. Alright, sorry, was that not worth it? Waste your time? Nah, that's not that that's cool, bro. bro. I have my uh transmission in my room. No way. So basically I'm just gonna give you guys a little rundown um on where the car's at and working on it uh in the barracks. So here I unloaded it um at Fort Campbell and then this is my first time uh working on it in the barracks room. So as you can see, I'm taking it out of my closet is where I store her um, and you this is this is the struggle for real um, but yeah so just removing everything first of all um, all the components down to the bare chassis so I can uh, sand and repaint it um, and so I'm learning along the way <clears throat> and you can see how dirty these old components are from you know, 1996. So sanding the chassis now so the paint will stick. Um, and then now painting it. Um, and so I didn't do the best job. It doesn't look that much better, but I actually learned a lot uh, of what I should have done differently and it was freezing outside so the paint barely stuck. So put on some decals like a band-aid on a uh, broken shoulder. And basically just going through cleaning all these parts. Uh, as you can see, they haven't been touched since the 90s so probably lost about 10 pounds worth of dirt and grease on this cart and there she is just putting on coats of wd-40 over the uh the parts to just give them a little rust free uh, layer or protection on top of all these parts then I'm just greasing, this isn't exactly necessarily necessary, but this is uh, the component that you use to change the caster, which is something, uh, a component, a tool you use to put more grip in the front end of the cart. So I'm just putting a little grease on there so it's not stuck to the metal like it was before. All right, so now I'm replacing the throttle spring. So that's the throttle spring from 1880 and we put on a freshie. So just putting it on here, and so uh, my throttle used to stick when I used to race this, and so I'd go into corners and the throttle, would, <laughs> it would just be full throttle and wouldn't go down. So I, I uh, decided that maybe a little spring was a good investment. Hey. All right, and so these are new bearings. This is in the front uh, wheel hub. So I got all new bearings, rear axle bearings, these front wheel hub bearings and uh, spindle bearings. So I replaced all the bearings, uh, which if you don't know what bearings are, they basically make it so things can spin. All right, so um, here we go with the new components for the axle. Um, so here was the old rear axle. And then now we've got a brand new one. Same thing with the brake disc. Old brake disc. New one. So shout out to Coyote Motorsports for working with me and helping me out. Um, and we'll get this stuff put back on. All right, so now I've got the rear bearings. Uh, and so we're putting these in the, the rear bearing housing so they can bolt onto the chassis and then spin the rear axle. I don't know about you guys, but I never really thought about how you know, a solid metal piece of whatever spins uh, another piece. So bearings are really, really cool and I think an awesome concept. So I'm just uh, bolting them here. Like I said, it was very satisfying to put new bearings on this cart because the it, she barely rolled. I mean, it was just like so full of gunk and grease. Uh, so it was a it was a fun deal. So this is an interesting part. Uh, this this is the spindle. This is what uh, connects to the steering arm and then to the wheel hub. So when you turn uh, the steering, is that's what that rotates on. And so what I just did is put it in the oven because I could not fit the bearings into the spindle. And so after asking multiple Facebook, uh, Facebook groups, um, I appreciate you guys for helping me out. They said I had to put the spindle in the oven and then the bearings in the freezer. So the bearings constricted and the spindle uh, widened so that I could fit them in so crazy experience but you know here's me cooking up some spindle on a Saturday afternoon
brand new brake disc. I uh, just put it to the housing together. Collected my bearings, my frozen bearings, out of the freezer. <clears throat> and here's my spindle. This was this was the biggest heartache of everything. It was impossible to get these bearings in, but it did work more or less. Maybe they might have been bent a little bit, but we got her done. So I just want to say thank you to all the groups on Facebook that are helping me out because I have a million questions. Okay, so now fast forward, I've put in the uh, bearings and the spindles and the hubs, and I'm going to let Led Zeppelin take over a little bit here. Hello? Hello? There you unwrap the Zeppelin! So as you can see here, this is basically the front geometry, so think of it as the pieces that are uh, turning the wheels. Um, so I'm separating the spacers, uh, which you'll see here, and you actually saw on my phone, I took a picture before, so I'm kind of dressing, how I'm putting it back together how it was uh, on the phone. So I'm putting the grease here because these spacers, you want, well, you want everything to spin nicely, so I'm just greasing this, lubing this baby down, so... I'm ready, I'm ready for her to start rolling smoothly because that's what she deserves. So I'm putting the spacers on the spindle here. And so what this does is controls how wide your front track width is. Um, basically how wide the distance between your front two tires. Um, and then I'm having fun spinning the bearing because I love stuff that spins nicely. And then I'm putting back on the tie rod that connects it to the steering shaft. Um, so when I turn the steering wheel, everything will work in motion. All right, so you can see the steering arm here, there. You can just imagine the steering wheel bolts on top. Uh, to that on top of the the rod so then there, I got the tie rod and then I'm putting the spindle on and then on that the end of the spindle where the um, wheel hub has the three bolts that's where I'll bolt the tire uh, and this is a painful process I fit about a whole month and a half worth of uh, work and learning and failures into a 16 minute video but I hope you're still with me and enjoying So now I'm getting ready to put on a new rear axle. I replaced the old one. Uh, and so I'm basically just, like I said, I, I like things that move and spin freely. So I'm lubing down the inside of the bearings, maybe being a little extra. So this rear axle slides in. A lot of times people hit it with a, a rubber mallet and I just, I want to be as gentle as possible. So lubing this thing down and uh, then sliding it into the rear bearings. So you slide it into one side and then you put your components in the middle that need to go there so I have my uh, uh, component that holds the, the rear sprocket and then the brake disc and then I slide it through the rest of the axle so this is my first axle change ever so you guys are witnessing history she spins baby Now I'm just measuring uh, the output of the axle on each side, just making sure that I'm as close as I can be, uh, so as even as I can be. Then I'm just tightening, tightening up the, the uh, grub screws on the rear axle so it doesn't shift then inside and it's nice and tight. Putting on the rear wheel hubs now, uh, nice and smooth, nice and clean, very smooth, very clean and just tightening those up. I put everything as wide, I put the track width as wide as possible. I put full caster in because this cart has no grip, but uh, I'm probably being a little extra. So that's what we're doing. And now you can see this is what a key is. It's 
fits, as you can see, it fits into the slot of the component and then it also fits, fits into the slot of the axle. So what you can do is you can slide these components onto the axle, but just so that not just tightening, tightening them with a bolt, they actually slide onto this key, as you can see, secures them even more on the axle. So you can take them off as freely as you want, but when you tighten them down, uh, they're very secure on the axle. Very genius. Spin action. This is in the, the black plastic thing around is the sprocket guard. So basically what that does is it keeps the chain on that rear sprocket. This is basically This is, that's the sprocket right there. This is basically the transmission of a cart uh, and how it moves and how the engine drives the rear axle. So that chain guard, it basically keeps it. So if you go over a bump or anything, you don't throw a chain and then your chain comes off. Just tidy it up here. So I got new kingpins uh, for the front. The last one was from 1880. So uh, these are the spacers. So you'll see how it works and how it all comes together because I couldn't visualize it until I did it. So I take the spindle here. I take the spacers so they sit nice. So the spindle sits nicely in this housing right here, and uh, we put the kingpin through. And this basically, as you can start to see how it it actually works on the track. So at the end, at the very end, where those bolts are. You see now how when you're turning the steering wheel, right? Now you see kind of how it works. And the bolts would, um, the tire would bolt onto those bolts on the wheel hub. So another day, another dollar, another go-kart in my closet. I'm taking her out here. My shoulders hurt, all right, so I'm not too strong, so I'm gonna have to make fun of me. It's heavier than it looks. All right, so I got new brake components. I was pretty excited about that. I was trying to rebuild my last ones, but I, it was, I couldn't even, they were so old. That's, that's it, and it's not even half as bad. That's after it was cleaned. So I got new brake components. It's nice to have brakes that work so you don't have to um, uh, fly off the track. So, and these are uh, the camber pills for the Coyote cart. Uh, basically what camber does is it controls the lateral, um, angle at which your tires are and so I got new camber pills for both sides uh, just so they were even I kind of lost the other one to be honest anyway so I'm putting on the camber pills so the front geometry is good to go and basically race with uh, race ready. so I set this cart at zero camber degree Oh, and all of this is done with no drill, but um, a wrench and a, and a socket, so please be proud of me. Now we're gonna fit on the front, uh, the master cylinder of the brake. This is where uh, mainly the brake fluid is stored and then pumped into through the brake lines to compress the brake pads. So I'm tightening this here on the front. Um, as you can see, that line, that metal rod connects to my brake pedal, so as you can see, very simple, but also, to me, very complex, seeing how all this is coming together. So, tightening up the master cylinder so it fits securely on the cart. These are the brake pads um, and the brake pad housings, the brake calipers, if you will. So sliding these into the rear, now you can see it's coming together. There's the brake disc, and I'm fitting that between the brake calipers and the brake uh, pads. So you'll see here in a minute how you have to adjust it. So tightening the brake calipers. And if you can hear there, so what I'm doing is I'm adjusting because as you can hear, the brake uh, disc was dragging against the pad. So now I'm looking down and adjusting. And now um, the brake disc flowed freely. Um, so go back if you missed that. 
installing the, the brake lines now uh, so the, the hydraulic, uh, sorry, excuse me, the brake fluid can go from the master cylinder to the calipers in the back. I'm loosening the bleed nipples so I can bleed the brakes, get the air bubbles out of the system, and fill the brakes with brake fluid. And I'm checking the instructions that no idea what I'm doing. As you can see, the brake fluid filling up in the lines as I'm pumping it through. Oh, it squirted out! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Wait a second! Oh my gosh, it went all over my stuff! <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> And there's the brakes. They somewhat work. If anybody has better suggestions, let me know. All right, guys, that's it for the video. I put my heart and soul into that, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. So basically where I'm at is the carts, everything's together except the seat, which is pretty easy to bolt on, and the clutch and the engine and those things going together. Uh, I'm having some trouble with putting the clutch together, so this is me reaching out to the racing community that's been so kind and helped me. Uh, I would love to get a race in February with the Coyote. I think it would be a great end to the series. Uh, basically put it together from the bare chassis, built her up, and then take her to a race, which I think would be really cool. I know there's a Fremont uh, 250 in Ohio, and then there's a race going on in GoPro on uh, February 19th, which are both seven hours away, which will be a trip. But if anybody's willing to help me out and just get her running, um, that would be awesome. So thank you guys so much for the support and all the love. And